we didn't have enough about beer belly, we will speak more about the beer belly. Uh, hello, uh, I'm a medical doctor, I'm specialized in uh, human nutrition, I have a PhD in human nutrition and I um, work in uh, public health nutrition. So I don't like scapegoats, I don't like people to blame a food or a drink for being the cause of their belly, of their uh, ill habits, ill everyday habits. So I tried to see if there is, under this very uh, scientific title, if there is any connection between drinking beer and actually getting a huge belly or getting weight. But as my uh, previous uh, speaker told you very clearly, uh, all calories are born equal, that's for sure. So, uh, it's a very fresh study, we just finished it. I just finished the statistics um, a few weeks, I can say, before this uh, uh, conference, so uh, we didn't uh, go very deep inside the figures, I think, but uh, for now it's quite uh, interesting. Uh, so, beer is uh, a drink with many qualities. I'm going to go further because you already, you've already heard about those qualities. Uh, making a parent is, as a doctor, I'm usually asked, will you say to your patients, drink beer because uh, you have some advantages? If they are not drinking any alcohol at all, I cannot t tell them to drink because uh, I'm not sure they will stop at the indicated quantities. But if they are drinking, yes, I will encourage this and just advise them to do it in moderation. And if there is to make a selection, of course, beer is the most recommended uh, drink because of the low content of alcohol. Uh, the calories in a 100 milliliters of beer are similar with uh, those in a glass of, uh, I don't know, in 100 milliliters of soft drink or even uh, of orange juice. It's nothing special here. Mainly the calories are coming from carbs, proteins, and alcohol. And you've seen uh, during the previous presentations, uh, presentation that indeed alcohol is uh, highly calorigen. One gram of alcohol brings us 7.07 calories, which is high. Why are we very interested when it comes to abdominal obesity? It's not only that it's ugly. Yes, indeed, it's very ugly, either on men and or women. And I'm especially angry because I see uh, a big belly to my students who are around 20, 25, which is unforgivable, uh, at least from my point of view. Uh, the big problem with this central obesity, of this abdominal obesity, is about the fat tissue, is, is, which is not um, really like a lining under our skin. It's not uh, just sitting there and doing nothing. This is fat tissue spread around the viscers inside our abdomen, and uh, this kind of fat tissue is very active. It is secreting different substances, which are the culprits for different diseases, for cardiovascular diseases first, and then for diabetes in second place. Uh, or diabetes and cardiovascular diseases doesn't uh, matter, the order. Uh, as a matter of fact, they are secret secreting, especially they are synthesizing especially this uh, uh, kind of uh, substances, which are triggering inflammation, and from this point, uh, atherosclerosis, which has huge consequences. Now we are really living more, but unfortunately the quality of life in the final years of life is not really as high as we like it because of cardiovascular diseases and diabetes, but we can change these things by working a little bit with our lifestyle. Okay, you've seen the picture. Um, we have the apple, which is generally attributed to men, and the pear who is generally attributed to women because there is the android pattern and the genoid pattern of getting fat. But keep in mind that this is not closely, as closely as we think related to gender. We can see an apple type of, a, so uh, an android type of obesity in women as well as in men. The problem is with the android adiposity, I don't know, where is the red spot? Ah, okay, the green one. 
uh, this type of obesity is uh, the wrong one because the fat tissue is inside. This one, I know we don't like it as women at all because now we, all women has to resemble to Lara Croft, for example, which is not uh, as women should be classically, but we have to be thin and lean and with the big breasts, obviously, but here we have some help. <laughs> some outside help, but this type of uh, obesity is, of obesity, of uh, getting fat tissue is more uh, adequate because the fat tissue is just under the skin. Unfortunately, liposuction works here, and here it works not. Okay. Um, we have some values uh, from WHO for Europeans, for, for Caucasians. Uh, they are very small. Maybe when you will get home and uh, try to measure yourself, you will see that they are very small. Unfortunately, above these values, no, I don't have that, uh, that uh, slide. Above these values here, sorry. Above these values, uh, you are getting metabolic syndrome and you are getting also a higher risk for cardiovascular diseases. And for this one, again, hypertension and a high risk for diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. So it's very important to keep them under control. The waist hip hair ratio is calculated by making a, a ratio between abdominal circumference and the hip circumference. Okay, so in the popular culture, again, again, you are getting fat, uh, you are getting a big, big belly because you are drinking beer. I profoundly and sincerely thought about why this conception is in our mind. And I think I, I, I arrived to a conclusion, even if I'm not a psychologue, but if you drink too much beer, you are bloated, and somehow in your mind remains the fact that after that, during years when you are getting fatter and fatter, that beer that was bloating your belly during uh, a moment we is transforming, has been transformed in fat. Similar like uh, people who are eating too much meat in order to get muscles. I don't know, maybe they are thinking that the uh, pork or the chops are migrating somehow and uh, uh, <laughs> are stored here on the deltoids, on the pectorals, and you are getting muscled, which doesn't work, that's for sure. And the well-known uh, Czech Republic study, beer and obesity a cross-sectional study, showed us very, uh, with a high accuracy, because they are big beer drinkers and exclusive uh, beer drinkers, that there is really no uh, scientific evidence that uh, beer consumption will lead to the so-called beer berries. Uh, we had no type of, uh, this type of study was not cared in Romania. We didn't care about the link uh, between beer consumption and other uh, uh, anthropomorphical uh, uh, parameters. So uh, we wanted to clarify if beer consumption will lead to weight gain. Of course, we are referring to moderate beer consumption, and if the belief that the beer belly exists is true or not. Uh, the study uh, targeted uh, three parameters, the, body, the BMA, the body mass index, the abdominal circumference, and the waist hip hair ratio. Uh, we considered the moderate beer consumption for males 660 milliliters, and for women the half, uh, taken from uh, beer, the average beer drunk in the country, which is uh, blonde beer with 5% uh, alcohol. The period uh, was um, last year from March to April. We targeted the adult population of Romania. It was a cross-sectional study. It was a sample which was and is representative for Romania. Um, it was validated in relation with the data from the National Institute of Statistics, uh, so it is representative for our uh, population. The respondent uh, had to answer to a FFQ questionnaire. Actually, it was the EPIC Norfolk questionnaire, translated in Romania and adapted to what we eat in Romania. And we validated uh, this uh, questionnaire with some other data we had 
for uh, a work we've done for EFSA, for the comprehensive data of uh, food they were gathering in all European countries. There we had data about the food ingestion and beer, of course, beer ingestion, uh, from a um, food diary carried out on uh, seven consecutive days. And the results we had from there uh, were similar with what we've got here. Uh, apart from the FFQ, we have also gathered demographical data and some physical, uh, some data uh, about their physical activity. The weight and the height were auto reported, and the investigators, uh, investigators uh, carried out two measurements. We trained them how to measure because you know there are standard points and there is a special technique. We made some movies with our. Uh, students and uh, we uh, teach them how to measure the abdominal circumference and the hip circumference. And after that, of course, we um, analyzed data. We had an equal number, not uh, quite equal, a proportional number of men and women. Of course, they were all adults because we are targeting uh, beer consumption. We couldn't work on uh, younger persons. Uh, as we can see here, not for my surprise, but really uh, the BMI, the average BMI is quite high, either for, especially for men, but also for women. Double, the W, uh, the waist hip ratio is also rather high and the abdominal circumference, yes, it is high. Um, I reckon that over 60% uh, are, not over, over 50% are overweight and obese, which is lame, but this is their reality. Uh, as, you, as we know, uh, the somatic parameters are not just controlled by one factor. They have different determinants from food consumption to gender. Age is a huge uh, element of uh, uh, action on these parameters. As we are getting older, we are getting fatter, presumably. Genetics is also important and, uh, of course, the... Uh, SES, the socioeconomical status. Uh, someone asked me why, obviously, because if we are richer, we can buy more healthier food and we have more knowledge. If we are more educated, we have more knowledge in this area. And of course, uh, the physical activity is very important. Uh, and these uh, are uh, the graphics describing the distribution of normal values and higher values for abdominal circumference. We had a zero category which were normal and one category for more. Um, you see women have uh, a higher circumference. The percent of women having a higher circumference is quite high. This is again for waist hip ratio. And this, uh, this is the crude data without uh, correcting for the confounders for the BMI related to beer consumption we have three categories, no, four categories for beer consumption. The zero category, uh, people who never or very seldom drink beer. The one category which drink five or six times a portion of beer per week. The second, uh, the two category which is uh, especially the, norm, the moderate, formed by the moderate uh, beer consumers, those who drink for women, women one portion for men too, and the three category, those who, e who drink a lot of beer, the, the exaggerated uh, consumption of beer. Uh, here you also see the span of uh, standard er uh, error, which is quite large, especially for women, because uh, in our country, drinking beer is really a habit for men, not for women. Uh, I actually have done a cluster uh, classification, a cluster analysis in this study, and we had three clusters. Women, a large part of women which never or very seldom drink alcohol, uh, either uh, beer or spirit or wine. Then there was uh, another uh, group of men who drink everything and in high quantity. And it was a middle group, mainly uh, composed by men, but <coughs> also with some women, with where, which were moderate consumers of uh, alcohol beverages. Uh, and regarding beer, only, I think, 3% were exclusive beer cons consumers. They drank uh, beer equally as wine and uh, spirits. It's not like in Czech, the Czech Republic where there was a huge, uh, a large number of people drinking just beer. So this is raw data for BMI. 
then for the abdominal circumference, raw data, and the, for the waist hip ratio, I'm sorry, his, uh, here there is something cover covering, but I will discuss the results a little bit later. Okay, in order to correct for all the, cons uh, the confounders, we've done uh, uh, regression analysis. Um, first of all, I want to say that we controlled uh, for each uh, regression for uh, sex, for, for gender, for physical activity, and for age. And when we worked on uh, abdominal circumference and on the waist-hip ratio, we also controlled for BMI, okay? Regarding the uh, abdominal circumference, no category of men, women, small consumer, high consumer of beer showed uh, any link with the um, abdominal circumference. So drinking beer less or drinking beer more was not a predictor for a higher abdominal circumference. No connection at all. This is what we've got at least. Uh, then for the waist hip ratio, again, none of the beer consumption class was statistically significant, a statistically significant predictor. You know, you might uh, notice some differences, but it doesn't mean that those differences are statistically significant. When we are going to correct for different confounders, the differences uh, disappear. However, for the waist hip ratio, just for the group of overweight men, the moderate beer consumption was a significant uh, predictor for a greatest waist hip ratio compared with no beer consumption at all. Just this group compared. And then we had, uh, for my astonishment at least, uh, a strange connection between beer ingestion and uh, BMI. The beer ingest ingestion was a significant predictor for men's, not for women's, just for men's BMI, but not for all the BMI classes. Actually, the more beer you drank, uh, it appears that you have a lower BMI. Okay, for the, for, uh, for the highest uh, category of consumers, I presume that they were alcoholics. Uh, they were, were not drinking not only beer, also uh, wine, spirits, and so on. But the, for the moderate consumers, I think there are elements of the lifestyle we didn't took in consideration. I tried to find some patterns, some uh, dietary patterns for drink consumers, for beer consumers, but for the moment I didn't find anything. Okay. And for women we had also um, something interesting, interesting for the BMA. Uh, those who were in the category of low consumption of beer had greater chances to have a lower BMI compared with women who were not drinking beer at all. At all. Just take in uh, consideration that this is a cross-sectional study, so we cannot have co um, cause and... Uh, co we don't have causality. We can't say this is the cause of uh, what we have, of our, what we obtained in our results. Uh, and of course, every time we are speaking about alcohol consumption, there is a bit of fibbing. Maybe they were lying, but these are the constraints of this type of uh, research. So, in conclusion, there is unlikely that the moderate beer ingestion can cause higher BMI, abdominal circumference, or waist hip ratio in the general population. That's clear that beer ingestion in moderation is not per se fattening. There are equal calories coming, fr coming from different sources. And the body parameters have different determinants, beer being just a food like and a drink like any other without any cons consequences on the so-called beer belly. As you've heard before, uh, our belly has different determinants, not beer. Thank you.